so we have our ship, and let's say we want to make our ship red. So as usual, you'd make a new configuration, right? And you're going to type in red, uh, red. And then we're going to enter the configuration, and we're going to make our ship red. Perfect. A little too red. Okay. Um, so now we have our configuration makes the ship red. So uh, what you'll see now is a new option under the JavaScript here. There's a third option now you'll see here. And it's object button controller. And this is what enables the visual code snippets to actually happen. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a button. So new HUD, add square. Perfect. I'm going to put this at uh, hold on, zero and zero. So it's nice in the corner. Um, and then so what I'm going to do is whenever you click this button, this will make, you know, red or white, red or white. It'll just toggle. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make this new JavaScript controller. We're going to click uh, the item that we want to actually, you know, enable stuff into. And this is where the magic happens. When I put this controller now into the code, this, these new options appear. And now you can make this button either a toggle or a regular button. And then you can add configurations. And the cool thing is you can add an endless amount of configurations. So let's say I want to enable this configuration. It automatically adds another one. And you can have that configuration be enabled or disabled as part of the so if you want to have a configuration to be like, you know, stop showing and to start another one, you can do that as part of one button. And you can do that to multiple configurations uh, at the same time. So, but for now, all I want to do is uh, do my, uh, my button. So I drag this here and I'm ready. I'm done. That's the whole coding. And now I'm going to come here and my button does this. Um, that's it. You've made a functional button. Um, and now if I wanted to in here, let's say, I'll show you, I'll make another configuration. So let me make another configuration. I'll make it button. Oops. Button. Um, and I'm going to click this configuration and whenever this, it's going to turn blue. I'm going to make it go blue. That would be blue. I'm out. I'm going to click my button again. I'm going to go to the code base. And I'm simply going to add this new configuration that I also wanted to affect. And it's going to be on. And now see another one come. So I can add essentially endless. And I'm going to preview. And let's see what happens. Now, see? Now the button and the boat turn different colors. And, and now you can do that with textures. You can do that with anything. You can do that activating animations, um, anything, anything you want. Um, can you show uh, how you would activate an animation? Well, okay, an animation still requires a one line of code because um, animations, yeah. Uh, anything you can do in a configuration right now, you can do as part of this. So that means bringing new objects, changing colors, adding, you know, removing objects, enlarging, you know, anything you can do within this window that you guys already know uh, can be done by just simply drag and drop now. Uh, to activate an animation, you'd still, have, you'd still need to go in here and there would have to be a, a piece of code added into, into this. Um, but the whole idea is, is you, don't, you don't have to look into this anymore. And you can probably notice that the code looks very different in this controller. That's, you know, it's a, look at it, only 43 lines of code, really, at the end of the day, it's nothing. Um, and it does all this functionality. And so now what we can do is we can make more of these controllers that activate different things. We can make one for animations. We can make one for uh, fade-ins, fade-outs, fly-ins, um, camera movements, light movements. Oh anything and it can all just be simply drag and drop drag and drop into your object and it just activates and then now you have the explosion you can for example have a object controller that does an explosion and it just automatically explodes your thing when you touch the button it will explode and you can have some parameters how far to explode and how fast to explode and so this is the this is the initiation i so to speak for our system into this new paradigm of drag and drop functionality it, re it will really revolutionize what we do and how we do things. You know, I, and look how easy it is for me to make now this a controller as well. And then, so I can put this in here, I can put this in here, and now I made my boat a button that actually activates my other button, see? Uh, it, it's so easy to make things like wow. this.
yeah, like it, you, you see how simple it is. It takes Alan timed me and literally took 29 seconds from the time to drag the object into the scene, click it, make the controller, make the button. Like all of this, I did it in 29 seconds. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting because it, the second he showed it to me, you know, I was on my computer and I made one and I, I showed it, I sent it back to him and look, look, I made one and I, I was able to make it in seconds. So it's, it's really, uh, they figured out the Allen proofness. <laughs> Uh, and with also the gizmo has been heavily improved. You'll probably notice that, you know, look at the, it turns white now when you're pulling it uh, like this, and, but the uh -huh. uh, cubes don't. And it works really smooth now. So if you use it in any way, shape, or, and now it works on first click. So before, if you were to click this, nothing would happen. You'd have to move it and then it would turn white and it was choppy. Now it's on click and then the movement is like, you know, it's immediate. There's no, it's very accurate is what I'm trying to say. Very, very to the point. How did you turn it to the square and the size? It's a shift. Oh, shift? Okay. Yeah. A shift and allows you to make it bigger and smaller. And now that works super well, too. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you can, make, you can make the configuration blow up the ship size or the button make it bigger. Yes, you can. Yes, you oh, can. You, did you? Did you? Watch. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, I'll okay. go into this configuration. I'll enter. And as part of this configuration, the ship will not only um, be red, but I'm going to make it one. So it's going to be one. Here, let me make it just for now, just to illustrate my point. Um, and then uh, we're going to close this. Uh, we're going to close this. Um, and then, yeah, it'll just, you see? Cool. And then the camera, did you all do the camera visual code snippets where you can go from one place to the other? Uh, so the cam, so that's going to be part of the animation suite, John, oh, the camera. Suite. Okay, got it. Yeah, <laughs> so we have the cameras here. Um, and you see, look, we have all these options now. You guys probably haven't seen this before. But we have field of view, near plane, far plane, position, target. And, uh, and then the cameras will be kind of like the lights where you'll be able to move them. Oh, and what we're also doing is uh, adding uh, the gizmo to the lights. Oh, no, he did it already. Yeah, look at this. Yes, watch this, guys. You notice something? Ah. Alan, you've probably never seen this. I actually um, did it by accident yesterday on the demo. Oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, now whenever it works on cool. the light, the gizmo works on the lights now. Yeah, but that's super impressive because now that we have for the lights, uh, we can have it for the camera. And now we can move the camera anywhere and position it and point it. Um, so as you can see, the camera's here and all these options are here. It's just a matter, like we're days away from having all this. Like so the, the basic camera and uh, the gizmo working everywhere, including in the, uh, uh, in, in the configurations. Paul, what were some of the uh, performance improvements that we pushed? Uh, the performance improvements were primarily, well, there was actually several. The whole scene graph is a massive performance improvement uh, because the buttons not work immediately. Like there's no delay in pressing the buttons. Um, so that's, that, that's a huge delay in any of our experiences, even the old ones. Um, the second one we did was the touch improvement. So that was huge. So you don't have to click it 10 times to make it work, right? Like the sloppy touch. And then uh, the other performance improvements were around what Sergey did in terms of uh, optimizing the application and the web experience, especially on iOS and also on Android on the web. Uh, but it, there's like there's performance improvements across the board. This was a massive push. Like there was a lot of pieces. You guys don't see this. I don't even see half of this, but this was a really, really big push. There was a lot of moving parts that got improved here um, from performance to load times to how we're able to identify bugs and how quickly we can squash them. and a lot of behind the scenes stuff happened uh, here uh, on, this, on this push. It looks to, amazing. Uh, it's starting to look like a real product. It's, uh, you know. Yeah, it is, like, right? Like, that's what I'm saying. It's so, you know, the, the, things like this really add a lot of validity to your product, being able to do things like this. Um, well, it just then, makes it, you know, it, it makes it not such a pain in the butt. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like moving okay. lights before was painful. You're like, I don't know, is it 1.1, 1 1.1111? 1 1 1 1 1? <laughs> oh. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, and you can see how fast things, I don't know if you can see, but it's like yeah, it's anything that you now. do now, 
it's literally immediate and you can press it a thousand times and it's, it's okay. Like it's, it's, it's all good. Um, so there's, there's a lot of that, those types of improvements that, that happen on this push. All right. Okay. Well, I'm super excited. Feel free to check it out. Feel free to make anything into a button. Feel free to enable, disable things, toggle. So toggle will simply do it once. So let's say I do, I want to toggle this configuration only once, but this one I want to keep on toggling. So what's going to happen now, you see, only, that's it. Only does it once. And if I uh, turn these off, which they should be, you will now see the proper effect. So it'll do it once and then it'll just stay there. So it's not, it's no longer a toggle. It's just so basically, a it's a button that only works once. Yes. It doesn't revert back. Uh, and before I had to write like special lines of code to do this, ah. just this simple thing was like three lines of code that I always had to write. And it was such like, this is such an improvement over what we're able to do. Um, yeah. So I guess if this is, yeah, enabled. So yeah, that's, that's why. Okay. Cause they're just, uh, these work, but um, they're just reversed essentially. So if it's on, it goes off. If it's off, it goes on. Um, yeah. Can you, um, can you show uh, um, me potentially like how I would select a button and then multiple buttons come up from that button selection that then I can select different colors. So let's say sure. the left, the white button pulls up five different colors. Let's do colors. that right now. Let's, uh, let me do that, erase this camera. Um, so what I'm gonna do before I do that is I'm gonna go to my HUD. And I'm gonna go add square one, add square two, add square three. Let's do three buttons for now, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna position them at zero, uh, zero, and zero. And then we're gonna go uh, 100. Uh, minus, I think, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna make this one go away. This one's gonna be minus 100. Uh, make it go away and then minus 100. Okay, perfect. So we have our three new squares. Um, one, two, three, yeah. Um, so now we're gonna go uh, minus 100 and uh, minus 200, let's say, for this bad boy. Uh, no, so let's make him go minus three, four hundred, just so he's far away. And then this guy is going to be plus four hundred. And then, yeah, and then we have a middle button. Okay, so let's say we want to activate these three buttons. I just brought in three regular buttons and just, you know, uh, put, put them here. So what we're going to do is normally these buttons would be off. So we're going to keep them off like this. We're going to go into our new configurations, which we're going to call three buttons first one two three uh, so we're going to enter this configuration and you're going to click on them one two and three and then what you have to do uh, right now uh, is click off and on on each eye because that makes it permanent so it doesn't matter what what's, what's happening these buttons are always going to be on now um, and then you, eg you exit yeah basically so you want to show these three buttons uh, so now we're going to take them uh, away. Hold on. Oh, yeah, because it's on here. Yeah. So now, even though they're off here, you see they're off here, they're now here, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to do when I press this button, these three buttons up here. So that's cool. I'll do that. So I simply take this three button and I put it here as a configuration, just like I did the other ones. And now when I press publish or preview, See these three buttons up here. Let's say I go back to preview. So now all this button is going to do is show me my three buttons, nothing else. And then if I want that button to change color while it does that, then I simply go to this button again. Uh, and I take my uh, color here, which I made it the blue. So now this button is going to turn blue whenever I press it. And then the, these buttons will come up. You see? Got it. Um, and it's, yeah, so you just okay, added these so three I, buttons. I'm going to throw down the gauntlet even further. What I want is I want each one of those buttons to do red, blue, and green, those three buttons. Well, okay, so I'll just do a very simple one now. So when I, hold on. buttons, I want them to be able to change. So I, I know, I know, it's easy, it's simple. So here, 
I'll select this one button. Okay. Um, and what I'll do is I'll put that controller in here, same controller. And now I'll put the red in here. So, and then I'll also, uh, what I'll do as part of the red is I'll come in here and I'll make this button red as it makes that one red and large. Okay. So there. So, so basically you have to, so you have to do one configuration to pull up the three buttons and then then you go into that button and make it do its own yeah it has to have its own object controller js yes and then you you drag and drop got it okay exactly so like this button that has the object controller here anything can be a button this is this can be a button anything can be a button other than a light a light cannot be a button um but anything inside your 3d space can be essentially an, an activation medium so now, uh, due to Alan's gauntlet, I will respond with in kind. So, well, that just seemed too easy, man. It's not much <laughs> of a gauntlet now. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> All right. So maybe yeah, that's the power of this. I think you guys are starting to see the um, immense power this this technology does, gives now. Like this is just the one controller. Just a simple button controller with one option, toggle or not toggle. So what imagine, you, we, imagine we had like and what does the toggle mean again? What does the toggle button type toggle not toggle? Toggle means it reverts back to its previous state. So on off, on off. If your toggle is uh, deselected, that means it only clicks in single engagement, but you can't return back. It doesn't ah uh, got it, got it. So let's say uh, that you, you once you press this button, you always wanted these buttons to stay, then you would not make that so a, a toggle, right? So you'd come here and you take this off. So watch what happens now. Um, so I bring these buttons on. I can't take them no, away no, anymore. No, no. Now uh, this button it. is always there and I can never take it away. So it's just one way. So, it, and there's depending on the logic, you may want either or. And I, it, and I can tell you that from experience, it's very common to use both depending on what you're trying to achieve. So, you know, imagine that now you can turn, you can change textures on a button very easily. So let's say you want to have a click state of a button like the blue color. So now that can be a texture. So you can have an on texture, off texture on your button, you know? You can have anything you want that you can do in a configuration at this point. So Paul, I have a quick question. Um, yeah. What what's our list of the top kind of fifty of these code snippets that we want? Or just top five? What's the next ones? Well, I think uh, we want. I would like to see some code snippets with animations, fly like camera movements uh, and actual product animations, where you can do like an explosion, for example. Um, so I think uh, that that would probably be my top. So this one is for sure number one. I would like to see some uh, different options for like fading things out, fading things in. So I'd like to have code snippets for that. So I'm able to make, fade objects in and out. I'm able to fade colors in and out. Can um, we make one that's easy to activate animations in FBXs or, or in this? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Animations would be one of those that we can activate the animations easily um, with like sliders and, you know, speeds and start time, end time, you know, wh which animation because Sometimes you're going to struggle if an object has five different animations. So we should be able to show you how many animations that object has and then which one you want to play at which point. So it'll essentially be like this, but it'll geared towards animation. So all the options will be different. There'll be more options and there'll be sliders and stuff like that. And it'll be just geared towards options for an animation or for an explosion or for camera movement or for. So I have a know. question then. Yeah. How, do we, how do we then, or how can we? open this up so other people can create these code snippets. Well, it's already open. You can create these code snippets right now as part of but our how system. Do you, like, do you understand what I mean? Like if I wanted to create one that brought up a, a few separate things or visualization on the right side there. You would need code. You would need to know how to do like JavaScript. But anybody can, can do that now and, and start creating these? Basically, yes, because this is just vanilla JavaScript that's, that's writing all of this. So how would you, so let go to the button control JS real quick, or just create new JS, just go to a new JS. Like object so, or, or object button, which one do you want to see? Uh, what if I don't want to do either? I want to do something completely separate. Can I, can, can you, oh, got it. 
So these are the only three, uh, these are the only three that someone can go in custom code and then save and then you reutilize that yes. somewhere else. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. And okay. we can, and so we're going to be, as you can see that now we, now we have the object button. This is, so this one is just a standard object controller for any object that you can make do anything. So up until last week, all the projects that I made, I made using this object controller, every single one, all that functionality was made as, as part of this object controller. I just used code, but now we're going to add more and more of these controllers or snippets, if you will. And, and these snippets will have very specialized things. So now I'll be able to make the boat bob, for example, in the water, that can be a snippet. And you can have different controls for that sliders and, you know, speed and blah, blah, how much you want it to bob. And, you know, so you can, these code snippets can become ubiquitous, almost uh, sort of uh, interchangeable between any project um, because it all runs within our framework and the framework understands what, what it's looking at. So it's, it's I can see this, this, this list getting huge. So how do we, how do we sort the store, the store? So as you can see now we have assets and console here. So we can revert back to any kind of errors that we see in a preview. And we're gonna add, uh, so we already, it's, uh, gonna, we're gonna have another button uh, for a CG uh, Sketchfab, and then a third one for our fourth one, or third one for our internal store. So all these things will be searchable and accessible and downloadable from the store directly. Can you actually, so if you, uh, sorry, uh, when, you, when you talked about the console, uh, I was just quick question, how does that work when you go to preview? Sure, uh, absolutely. So uh, let's say I load this. Um, so now the console has started. Um, so it, it, it's tracking pretty much everything I'm doing. If there's a problem, if there's some sort of error, it'll actually show me right here and it'll start, start a log of these errors. And then you can use that log then to troubleshoot your code. If you're coding, oh, so this you is the code. Sort of logic error or something that, that doesn't Exactly, make exactly. So right now I'm just doing drag and drop. So I'm, it's impossible for me to make a logic error because our system doesn't allow it. But if somebody is doing something custom in code like I was before, I would use, me and Walid use this all the time uh, to, to figure out. So, but it, you know, after you press uh, preview, it all goes away. Go so out of it, for a second and go into the edit of uh, object button controller JS top. Uh, object button, yeah. Yeah, you just go take a chunk out of here. Just like delete something that will break it. There you go. Now do preview and try to click that button. You see? There you go. Okay, cool. I get it now. Yeah. Now can um, we go back and delete the thing I just deleted? So can we undo? Will it work? What's that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We can do it. Yeah, yeah. Right here. There you go. Oh, cool. Yeah, so no, no worries. Um, but yeah, so that's what the console's for. So we're going to have, I'm not sure why it's not storing, but it should be storing the, your last mistake. That's, that's the whole point. Um, and then we're going to have the store integration, and then we're going to have like, internal store, and then also the CG, the Sketchfab one. So if I, if I created a JavaScript and we had a store, would I just like, drag and drop it to the store tab and then make some parameters like if I want to sell it or if it's free or something like that. Exactly. Exactly. Like we're going to have a process of uploading your, and it'll probably be something like this. You'll right click it. And over here, you'll have another option to upload to store. And then it'll just ask you, it'll probably pop up another screen and ask you which folder you want to put it in or how do you want to sell it, put it up for free. And then you'll choose and boom, it's up. 